All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're now joined by UCLA head coach Corey Close and student athletes Kiki Rice and Lauren Betts. We will get us started with a, um, sorry, excuse me. We'll get us started with an opening statement from Coach Close, and then followed by questions in the room, and then on Zoom if time allows for the student athletes. Coach Close. Um, you know, for, I want to just. Jim is such an excellent coach. Creighton is such a good team. So well coached. Um, when that bracket came out. I thought this could be our hardest game. I know what they're capable of. I've watched them several times this year, but also through the years. And I knew that their style of play would really challenge us. And uh, it obviously did. And so I just, um, those seniors uh, for Creighton have accomplished so much. And they are such a good basketball team. And just really want to give uh, a shout out to, to how, how much respect we have for the way they play um, and just how competitive they are. They, they've, they're a really good team. Secondly, I want to just say, wow, um, our crowd, they carried us. I thought in the third quarter, the energy that they gave us was so key. And I just, I just know how much goes into that um, from everybody in our support staff, marketing, um, you know, sports information, everybody that poured into us having that opportunity to have such a great crowd. 5.30 on a Monday night is not easy. And, uh, and, and they got it done. But I thought the crowd was a total difference maker. And then lastly, um, I'm just so proud of our team. Um, I'm proud of their selflessness. I'm proud of their growth mindset. I'm proud of their ability to have a next play speed mentality when things weren't going our way. And, you know, to respond and hold them to 21 points in the second half was tremendous. And we knew it was going to have to come with our defense. And then they had to adjust, and they started sending two and three people to Lauren. And we knew we had to attack off the bounce. And I thought Charisma and, and Kiki were just tremendous in some real critical moments. Uh, but it was all done with our defense in the second half. And, the, and just our – we have a phrase, and you've heard me say it a lot of times, but sometimes me, sometimes you, always us. And um, this was an us kind of win. And I'm so proud of the selflessness of this team. Right, we're going to open up to questions in the room for the student athletes. We'll start in the second row in the pink shirt. Um, Kiki, you kind of two things. What was the defensive adjustment or change in the second half? And then in the third quarter, I think you had 13 points. You had that kind of look of determination on your face. What were you feeling that allowed you to take over the game at that point? Yeah, first, defensively, I think, you know, we had a great game plan. Coach Tony put together a great scout, and I think in the first half we, you know, didn't completely follow that to the best of our ability. So in the second half we got together as a team, talked about transition defense, communicating on all their actions, and just uh, getting back to defending and executing the scout. Um, and that really helped us in the second half. And then in terms of the third quarter for me, I just felt like, you know, this is uh, obviously – at this point in the season, it's one one game and you're out. So I just knew that I needed to do whatever I had to do to you know help my team win. Whether that was um, you know feeding the ball to Lauren, Lauren was uh, so great in there, scoring, doing whatever. Um, and I think I just was focused on that. We're gonna go in the third row. Joe Reedy, AP. Lauren, how did it feel being back in the lineup? And <laughs> what was it like in the second half when they just kept sending two and three at you and? It seemed like it was really top traffic there in the paint. Um, yeah, at some point they're not going to let me play one on one. Um, <laughs> they saw that how that was going, so I think that <laughs> they needed to, you know, obviously like we knew at some point they were going to change their game plan. But um, I have so much trust and so much faith in my teammates that they're going to get open, and we work on that all the time. Like that's everyone's game plan against me. They're going to double team, triple team me. So um, I just think that that's what we work on in practice, and obviously a show today. And my teammates did a really good job cutting off me. So. And then, Kiki, how much did that open the paint up for you to drive because they were flooding the paint going after Lauren? Yeah, it totally um, changed the game. I mean, when Lauren's in there, they're sending multiple people to her. So um, I know that every time any guard on the perimeter really can drive, and Lauren's going to seal, get open, and we're going to have a good attack lane. We're going to go in the second row in the black blazer. Uh, Corey Jumman, Craytonian. Lauren. It felt like there was an adjustment made when you were guarding break to back off her in the second half. Mm -hmm. How did that impact your ability to protect the rim when you weren't having to go out and guard someone on the perimeter against that five out offense? Yeah, well, 14. yeah, 14. Yeah, <laughs> like he said, I mean, Coach Tony put together a really great game plan. And, you know, obviously, like, she's more of a passer than a scorer. So I think that's just we worked on in practice. And, um, yeah, I think 
that was just my whole job is to protect the paint, not let them get easy layups. I think in the first half I didn't do a great job of that, but the second half I did a lot better. So. We're doing the second row in the middle and the black top. Hi, uh, Haley Sawyer, SoCal News Group. Um, I know limiting the three-point attempts was a big emphasis for you guys tonight, so um, how do you feel like you did in that area, especially in that first half compared to the second half? They got off 16 tonight, I think. We'll have Kiki answer first and then followed by Lauren. Yeah, I mean, they're a fantastic three-point shooting team. They hit contested threes um, and open threes, so we knew we had to um, really run them off the line and force them into tough two-point jumpers. And I think in the first half, we didn't really do that very well. They got a lot of transition threes um, and good looks, but in the second half, we forced them into tougher shots. And I don't, I don't know how many they got off, but I definitely think it was less. What she said, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just it was just communication at the end of the day. Like, we can do it. We work on it all the time. Um, we're one of the best defensive teams in the nation. We just got to put our minds to it and communicate, and that's all there is to it. So, We're going to go in the second row on the far end. Uh, Chase Wade, news for us online. Um, I just want to say great game tonight, guys. Very back-to-back -back fourth. Um, what are you guys going to do for these two victories to keep the momentum going for the next game? We'll have Kiki answer and then Lauren. Yeah, I mean, I think we watch film, um, we'll watch film from this game, see the areas that we can do better, and then prepare for um, you know our next opponent, which is LSU. And I think uh, we're really going to you know have good focused practices and scouts over these next few days, and get and just get prepared, um, you know, to you know play another really good team. Yeah. Um. Like she said, I just don't think we have a lot of time to focus on each win. We just have to move on. Um, so, you know, right now, like, you know, it feels good right now, but we got to focus on our next game and just get ready for that. And um, I know our coaches are going to do a really good job of just, like, keeping us present and making sure we work hard every day in practice. So. Okay. Our next question is going to be in the front corner, near side. Uh, Gavin Carlson, Daily Bruin for both players, could you just talk about sort of Charisma's ability to lead by example? It felt like throughout the game she was full court pressing almost on her own, forcing turnovers. She had that one jump ball, and even in a night where she only made two shots, just talk about her impact on the floor. We'll start with Kiki and then go to Lauren. Yeah, I think that's one of uh, the best things about Charisma is that she doesn't need to have to, uh, to score to impact the game. And, uh, in the first half especially, she was struggling uh, with making some shots, some shots that she knows she can make and she normally makes, but her defensive intensity and um, her focus, it really carried us. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just charisma. She's just a tough player. I mean, she doesn't need to score. She just, she works so hard, and she's such a great example for the rest of us sophomores who are trying to get like her. And um, <laughs> I just think that she brings so much energy and so, like, you know, it doesn't really matter what she's doing out there. You know that she's going to bring something to the team, no matter if it's points or whatever. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go in the second row in the black blazer. Uh, in her opening statement, Coach Close mentioned how the crowd impacted the game. What was it like on the court when the crowd was getting into it in that third, early fourth quarter? We'll start with Kiki and then go to Lauren. <laughs> no, it was so great. I mean, playing in front of all the incredible fans that came out, it was just so much fun, and it made the comeback um, that much better, and the energy felt great in the gym. It was sometimes it wasn't hard to hear, like, hard to hear our own play calls, um, but that was fun. It was just a great like, support, and we really enjoyed that. Yeah, just super thankful for everyone who came to show out on, like, a Monday night. It's not easy so I'm just really thankful for everyone that got here and yeah like he said it was just so loud at one point that I could not hear what she was saying so I was just trying to guess the play that we were running at that point but um yeah just really great crowd and I'm really thankful for all the fans so we got time for one more it's going to be in the front here on the left side in the black top Fredo Cervantes is here with TG Sports. Kiki, you know, in the second half there, you know, you guys were trailing by 10. And what was going through your mindset as you kind of went off with 17 points in the second half? Like, what was going on there? Um, I think it was just finding a way to, uh, you know, take it possession by possession, get a stop and get a score. And I think that's what we did in the second half. We stringed together stops and got out in transition and started to play our game. But it was just um, not letting the uh, deficit at halftime, like, take away from our focus and what we needed to execute in the second half. And that's all we have time for. Thank you both.
We're going to open it up to questions for Coach Close. As a reminder, if you're joining us on Zoom, please use the raise hand function if you have a question. Okay, we're going to start in the front corner here. Gavin Carlson, Daily Bruin for Coach, obviously. Um, <laughs> it felt like Creighton was scoring rapidly, like in five <laughs> seconds, seven yeah. seconds, um, especially getting on the perimeter and shooting threes. Um, just from my point of view, it seemed like the bench was pretty upset with the inability to locate players. Sort of what changed as the game went on? Was it just a matter of getting back? And, and how much of that was them having a lot of perimeter players, maybe you having two bigs on the floor? Yeah, I think that, you know, we, we're used to playing, um, you know, with four, you know, big, four guards. You know, I consider uh, Lena and, and uh, Angela like big guards, you know. Um, but that matchup, when they played 14, we knew we could play Lauren, and, uh, and that was going to allow us to do that. But then when they sub her out and they put in five shooters, um, we knew that that was going to pull her out. And I thought for a long time she did a really good job, and she got hesitant for that last three we gave up. Um, but overall, I think she can do it. She's surprisingly quick. I think she was a little doubting herself um, after you know coming back from her injury, whether she could do it. And I just said, I looked in the eye, and I just said, you got to make her drive. Uh, uh, hard twos are not going to hurt us. Make or drive. Get your heels on the three-point line. And uh, But I think that more than anything, it was just a will. Like, you guys, the system isn't going to do it. you got to go make plays together. And if you need to emergency switch something that we maybe didn't plan for, you do it. No layups, no threes. And how bad do you want this? you got 20 minutes to prove it. And at halftime, I, it just, I really laid into them about the choices. That we, we don't give up that many points and a half to anybody. And so we needed to just get back to doing things with our defense. I knew that if we could get enough stops, we'd score enough points. And I thought Cam was huge. And what happens is, is when she, uh, we got jumpers when she went in because we knew we needed her to cut to the basket. So you're really having two bigs right around the blocks. But that's when Angela got those threes, right? And then when we were able to play, uh, take her out and we were playing different lineups, then that's when Kiki was able to get downhill. And so I thought Cam, though, our ability to go offense, defense with her because she's such an anchor for us defensively. Um, but holding that team to 21 points in the second half, that, that was uh, truly remarkable. We're going to go in the first row with the blue top. Lauren Wing, the Daily Bruin. Um, about Gabriela Jaquez yeah. on Double Double Watch tonight, continuing her performance from Saturday as well. What can you say about – it seemed like you were trusting her on the three. Yeah. Obviously, she's really skilled inside. Yeah. Um, her versatility, her intensity, the spark she – brings for you all. Off yeah, I think that it's really the intensity and her defense and her rebounding. Um, she wasn't having a good night. And even as um, we were coming off for a timeout, two of her teammates come up and tell Gabs to keep shooting. We know, trust her work. And it didn't go in, but she never let her missing threes affect her defense and rebounding. And I think that shows such a mental toughness. When things don't go your way on the offensive end and shots that you usually make at a good percentage um, and saying, you know what, it's not going to keep me from making a winning play in another area and that's not easy to do and she is such a tough competitor these kinds of games they they show you who loves to compete and Gabriela Jaquez loves to compete and I thought she was huge in that Thanks. we're gonna go in the second row in the black top We talked about the crowd a little bit, but there was some UCLA basketball royalty out there tonight between yeah. Ann Myers and um, Denise Curry. Um, even like Miss Val from gymnastics has kind of become a fan of you guys. Yeah. So what does that mean to have the support of like those who came before well, the Jordan career? Canada, Earl Watson, um, you know, Russell and Nina came out to the last game, you know, um, Lisey Brewer, Drexia Morris, all of our alumni that come back. I mean, whether you're royalty or you just have Bruin in your blood, uh, your family. And to have our family in the building, Earl's going to New York to support us in Albany. I mean, we've just got amazing alumni. And it's just, uh, it's an honor to represent them. You know, Mary Haggerty met me at going into the hallway and just was just so passionate and proud. Debbie Willie Halliday was here. I mean, the list, I'm, it's always scary when you start naming people. But I just really appreciate um, the Bruin bubble, the pride, the alumni, um, whether you're men's or women's, Kelly and Way Perez was here, softball was here. I mean, there's just so many things. Of um, it's, a, it's, it's probably one of my favorite things about being the coach at UCLA 
is the family, that it really means something. If you represent the four letters across your chest, you are family for life. And so it's an honor to see those people, and it's an honor to play for them uh, as we represent them on and off the court. We're going to go in, Joe, in the third row. Corey, you're now the fourth Pac-12 team to get to the Sweet 16. Could be six by the end of the night. I mean, what does it mean that in the final year of the conference yeah. to be balling like this? <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it. you know, every coach is – campaigning that their conference is the best in the country. I don't know how many times I've heard that. Uh, well, I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say our numbers are backing it up, you know, that I just think we have prepared, uh, you know, each other um, to be ready for big moments. Uh, the intensity that you have to come and be ready to play with and the solutions you have to find with all the different styles of play, it just is – it's an honor. And it was interesting, just the other day, um, Tara Vanderveer, who's the least person who would need to do this, sent a text message to all the other coaches and talked about what an honor it's been to coach in this conference. And then everybody was piping in all back and forth. But I just thought, you know, it used to be Stanford and the 11 Dwarfs. And now look at it. And who's the first person to champion that balance? Tara. And I just think it really has been a very special experience. We've built this together. Taking off our institutional hats and choosing to grow the game and grow the conference was more important. And that was a real big honor to be a part of. And then two games in L.A. tonight, two good crowds. I mean, what does this mean to yeah. advance the game? I don't know what theirs was, but we had almost 9,000 in the first night, and we had almost 8,000 in uh, on a Monday night at 5:30. Um, women's sports is here; it's doing something. Southern California basketball for the women is amazing, and get on board. It's it's a growth stock, people. Like, you better get in now and because it is spectacular. But I am so proud that Southern California is coming out to support these great players. Um, they are working their tails off. I remember back in the summer, we were playing open gyms with each other. And it was just competitive as all get out. But this is a, this is a special time in Southern California women's basketball. And uh, really thankful to you all that are telling these stories, creating the buzz. This is a culmination of your work as well as it is ours. And so we got to keep this thing going because these are two really young teams. And this is something that we have a really special um, trail to blaze over the next several years. And that's all we have time for. Thank you, Coach Close. All right. Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate you.
We're now joined in the room by Creighton head coach Jim Flannery and student athletes Emma Ronsick and Lauren Jensen. We'll get started with an opening statement from Coach Flannery, followed by questions for the student athletes first in the room and then on Zoom. As a reminder, if you're joining us on Zoom, please use the raise hand function so I know you have a question. Coach. Yeah, congrats to UCLA. I thought they really uh, defended on a, on a different level in that second half, and we couldn't really get much going, um, and, and particularly in the fourth quarter. And probably, yeah, I thought we got a little tired. I thought, you know, Corey probably did a better job of, of using her bench and, and keeping people fresh. But I thought we fought. I'm so proud of our team, and and uh, just can't say enough about how how much joy I get out of coaching them and. Uh, great experience, uh, and, and you know, I, I I told him in the locker room, it's it's what these what this group has done is they've made the NCAA tournament an expectation, which is probably something that we haven't had at Creighton, and uh, that's a credit to to the work that they've put in, the way they love each other, take care of each other, and um, so we're super proud of them. But uh, again, congrats to UCLA. I mean, I thought Rice was fantastic in the second half, and obviously Betts was. Really good in the in the first half. We took some chances off some kids in the second half to try to limit bets, but but then we didn't do enough to keep Rice from getting in the lane, and and she really hurt us in transition. So um, this one will hurt, but I'm, I'm I'm proud of our group. Okay, we'll open up to questions for the student athletes. We're going to go in the black blazer first. Uh, they were able to stop a lot of your off-ball actions in the second half. How are they able to prevent those passes from coming in that were clicking so much in the first half? We'll start with Emma and then go to Lauren. Yeah, I mean, I thought we got a lot of open looks that they probably weren't anticipating that they were going to give up in the first half. And I think they kind of just figured out in the second half if they wanted to turn the game around that they just couldn't, couldn't do that anymore. We have so many good shooters on our team. And I think that they saw that or they felt that in the first half and they kind of came out. Um, with a different type of intensity in the second. So, yeah, I mean, it was credit to their change in the second half, but, yeah. Um, yeah, credit to UCLA. I mean, they made life difficult for us, especially in the second half. Um, they're disrupting our offense, making it hard for us to catch, and I feel like even when we get, did get a shot off, it was contested, um, and so they definitely ramped it up on the defensive end. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was tough for us to get going. We're going to go in the black blazer again. Uh, now that the season's kind of coming to an end, how has it been to play with this group that you guys have spent so much time around for, you know, four seasons for you and the three for you, Lauren? We'll start with Lauren and then go to Emma. Um, it's been so awesome. You know, I love it here. Um, the people, you know, make it so fun. I mean, I love playing basketball, but the people are really what it's about. And, um, you know, I just couldn't be more proud of this team and what we've done this year and um, what I've been able to be a part of the past three years, and I'm super grateful for it. Yeah, I mean, I just love every teammate individually in a different way. They're all so special to me. Living with Lexi Onru has been such an amazing experience just because we grew up together, and then now we finally get that opportunity to actually live, live with each other. Um, yeah, I mean, just everyone has made such an impact on my life positively. I don't think I have a bad thing to say about anyone on Grains campus, the staff. Just it's been an amazing ride. We'll go in the black blazer again. Emma, what was it like being able to play in front of your family, especially your sister who was able to make it out this weekend? Yeah, I'm not sure she needed much coaxing to get out to Los Angeles, but um, yeah, it's awesome just to be able to play. My parents are very well-traveled. Um, they come to pretty much every basketball game, and I couldn't thank them enough for all their support um, with me and Hannah because she plays basketball too. Um, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I don't think there was much coaxing to get her out here, but it's always awesome to just watch her um, cheer for us, cheer for me and what we're doing because they didn't do any postseason this year. But yeah, it's just awesome to see them in the stands every game. Our last question for the student athletes is going to come from Matt on Zoom. Yeah, I apologize. I know this is kind of a raw moment here, but I'm just curious 
if the emotions that are going through your heads right now are more, you know, the ones that are obvious with the season coming to an end, or if you're, if it's more pride in, if this is the last time you guys all play together, that you guys have accomplished a lot. We'll start with Lauren and then go to Emma. Um, you know, I think it's honestly all the emotions. Um, we wanted to make it to the Sweet 16, and that that really hurts. Um, and so there's a lot of emotions that you feel um, when you lose in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I mean, I'd say emotions too. Just being this close to Sweet 16, um, again, it's kind of just soul-crushing to go in the locker room afterwards and not be celebrating with the, some of your best friends. So, yeah, the emotions were high. They're probably going to be um, like this for the next few days. That's all we have time for for the student-athletes. Thank you both. What? We're going to open it up to questions for Coach Flannery, first in the room and then on Zoom. We'll start with the red top on the far side. Chase Wait news for us online. I just wanted to have a quick comment about the, you know, the reflection for the season. You know, I know it's super tough tonight, yeah. but you guys accomplished so much. There's been so many accolades, so many ups and downs throughout the nights. Um, just give me a quick reflection on how you feel the season went and what are you guys hoping for the future? Sure. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it was we were kind of prisoners, prisoners of the moment. And, you know, when we went to the Elite Eight a couple years ago, it's a great season, but you know, if you we won a two-point game in the <laughs> in the second round, we lost a, a two-possession game in the second round tonight. So it's easy to feel like oh, we didn't quite accomplish as much. But I think if you look at the balance of the season, we lost one non-conference game, and I think we played the seventh strongest uh, non-conference schedule in the country, and we went nine and one. We finished fifteen and three in a great league, Big East. Lost twice to UConn and once at Marquette, who was in the tournament, um, and then lost tonight to UCLA. So, I mean, our, our, our body of work was, was great. We have flaws. I mean, we have, and, and that's what makes me so proud is I feel like we, um, we play through them and we play for each other. And, um, you know, what, 26 and 6 is, is a pretty dang good year when you play in the league that we play in and you played the non-conference that we that we played in. So we have a, we had obviously we have an experienced group. We started five seniors. We bring a senior off the bench. So um, we expected to be good, but I, I think we we achieved at a at a level that that we kind of hoped for, even though we're obviously disappointed tonight. We're gonna go in the second row in the green top. Joe Reedy, AP. Jim, you've talked about the expectations now going up. You've made three straight NCAA tournaments. Normally in the past, if you lost six seniors, that would be a tough rebuilding job. But with the portal and everything now, yeah. how, how easy do you think it could be to reload and Creighton, you know, Big East program with everything you've accomplished? Yeah, you hope it helps us in recruiting. I mean, we're not we're not opposed to using the transfer portal, but that's not something that we're necessarily going to be in as much as a lot of teams. I just think that's one of the things that makes our program special is we're not going to that's not going to necessarily be who we are. Now, I may say something different in a couple of years because um, we want to be good, but I I do think that uh, the success that that we've had over the last few years should help us in recruiting and and we're going to have a lot of these players come back. I mean, it's not it's not official and and you know, if somebody changes their mind, but there's a there's a good chance that the bulk of this class will be back to play uh and use their covid year. So, I'm not going to get into the specifics of that, but it's not going <clears> to <throat> a lot of them will be back and 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 so we might not be doing as much portaling till maybe next year. Our next question is going to be from the black blazer in the second row. Uh, Corey Jevon Cretonian. Yeah. Coach, how do you think, how well did you think Mal responded on the defensive end when she was struggling so much offensively? And was there ever a thought of pulling her out a little earlier when they were making that adjustment to pull back on her defensively? Yeah, we've seen that a lot with Mal this year. I mean, we've got a, 
we've 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 had to hide her. I mean, you know, she she's a super valuable piece of what we do, but we've had to hide her in some places offensively. Um, but I thought defensively, she did a really good job on bats. She probably was our best defender on bats. Uh, we need her length and just her versatility defensively. And and yeah, there's a lot of things she can't do on offense, but she does make good decisions. I know. I think she had one turnover tonight, but she had zero turnovers the other night against UNLV and, and three assists. So, you know, sometimes it's about not making mistakes because uh, we do have we typically have enough scoring. But it was a little bit. I was a little bit caught, you know, in that second half, honestly, between what, whether we needed to play a little bit better offensive lineup based on what we, the, the struggle that we were having, um, but we also were having a hard time stopping, you know, particularly Rice and, and get them getting in the paint a little bit more. Um, so that's been a battle for us this year, but uh, I think overall Mel has has really kind of figured out how to play, but we've got to, you know, we'll have to do some things to develop her, so we're not um, necessarily quite in the position that we've been in a lot this year. Okay. Our last question is going to come from Matt on Zoom. Yeah, hi, Flynn. Uh, I know you just kind of said that you're expecting kind of the bulk of the class to be back, but just, just in the meantime right now and looking back on what has already been accomplished. I'm just curious about what you're, what are going to be the hard things to forget about coaching this group, especially all six of them together and what they've been able to do to not only elevate this program, but just, you know, like you mentioned, the joy that they've played with in doing it. Yeah, I think, and I just, our strength coach, Brad Schmidt, I always open up the locker room during the last game and anybody can say, anything, so coaches, staff, players, uh, it's kind of an open forum. And uh, he talked about how working with them makes him a better person. And I I think that's, you know, you know me, I, after I finished talking and I heard what Brad said, I kind of had to jump back in because I do think that's, when you love your work life, uh, the, it really helps the rest of your life. And I feel like this group, <laughs> makes it really easy for me um, because I love my work life and most of that has to do with the way that they are. So I think it, you know, not to get too sappy, but I think it makes me a better husband, a better father and all those things. And I think everybody on our staff would say the same thing because you're, when you're surrounded by, peop by people who, who are as good as a, a human beings as the, as the ones that I'm surrounded by, it just, it makes it easy to to leave work and be happy. Um, so uh, I'm I'm super thankful to have gotten to coach this group and you know to to play a, a program as good as UCLA down to the wire on the road um, is a testament to how hard they work and how together that they are. That's all we have time for. Thank you, Coach.